Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be here with you in beautiful Marrakesh. Um, maybe you could just begin um, by saying what it meant to you to be asked to come and be on the jury at this very special film festival. Yeah, well, I haven't been on a jury before, so it's the first time. Um, and my film played here, my first film played here in 2011. So to sort of come back to, to Marrakesh and, you know, be on a, be on a jury, especially with um, Sorrentino, is um, you know it's a real privilege. So yeah, it's I mean it's, it's great. You sit around and you watch films and you think about your own filmmaking and uh, you meet filmmakers. It's a it's a pretty um, pretty great place to be. And looking at the selection of films, I mean obviously you can't be already choosing your favourites now. But what perhaps stands out to you in terms of maybe some of the themes, um, the, the kind of spectrum of different kind of films that are there, and what might you be looking for in a film, you know, that really means something special to you? Um, well, they're really, they're really diverse films. They're from uh, all sorts of pockets of the world that, you know, some of them I know little about in the, in the countries that they've been made. So you're getting really intimate insights into particular cultures and, and a particular time and place now. There's, um, I don't know, there seems to be a real urgency. Um, there, there's, a, there's a couple films that I've sort of seen that were incredibly visceral, you know, and, and um, very personal. Um, and look, I mean, that's all I'm responding to really is sort of an authenticity in the filmmaking and sort of feeling as though that film could be made by no one but but that filmmaker um, and I think when you when you see a film like that it, it, it really moves you and and yeah as, as I said you sort of are immersed in a world that you sort of forget forget about what's around you and you sort of enter this in kind of in, in incredible kind of point of view um, so yeah so I've been um, and, and they are, they're, they're very personal films this year. They feel um, very particular and um, one-offs. Mm. And looking back at your own filmography, um, what is it for you that stands out to you about scripts? And do you see perhaps a thread or an evolution in, in the films that you've made, Just going from Snowtown, you know, uh, Macbeth, Assassin's Creed, and then maybe coming back kind of to sort of a more like realistic kind of socially yeah. grounded film yeah. um, in, in, in Nitron. Yeah, no, I've made a mixed bag of films from <laughs> different styles and um, but it was, it was why I was so interested in making Nitram was, you know, it was a very small film, it was only, you know, very, very, very small budget and we sort of shot it in sort of 21, 22 days and, um, and in a sense it was sort of a sort of full circle going back to a way of making films similar to my first one that I, I really loved and enjoyed and just very, very simple way of making um, the, the film. There weren't many sort of setups and um, working very intimately with actors, you know, on set, which is what I love the most. Um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a sort of strange kind of uh, circle back to some, something quite similar to, or at least the, the way in which I made my first film. Mm. And coming to that, that, that most recent film, I mean, it was no, um, it wasn't completely free of controversy, even yeah. the concept yeah. of um, dealing with that particular subject matter, something that's still quite raw in, in your country. Yeah. Um, why did you feel compelled that despite that, this was an important story to tell? And, and the approach that you took, I guess, um, it's not about uh, glamorizing or mythologizing, um, but just kind of, holding a, a mirror up to this, this is something that happened in our society. Don't we need to do something differently to stop it happening again? Yeah. Well, it, it, it was Sean, Sean, sent me, Sean Grant who'd written Snowtown and also True History of the Kelly Gang said, I, I'm, I'm going to send you a, a script and I'm not going to tell you anything about it. And, and, I, and I opened it and realised kind of what it was. And I live in Tasmania where the Port Arthur um, shootings happened. So I was sort of terrified to sort of start reading it. But, but by the end of it, I was so deeply moved by it. And there was something so familiar and recognisable. And I kept on thinking about it days and weeks afterwards and thought, I, I really have to make this. And I, I trusted Sean's approach and... Um, and knew deeply that it was going to upset an enormous amount of people. But I, I just had faith that the way in which he was telling this story and, and, and the, um, you know, the, 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 um, how it was speaking to gun reform and how it was speaking to kind of, I guess, our responsibility as a community 
um, to those sort of outliers that you know sort of fall between the cracks a bit in in society especially in Australia it, it, it felt very truthful um, so yeah look it, it was terribly difficult to make and um, and quite emotional making it but I you know I, I, I just believed in Sean's writing and believed in kind of why why we were making it um, but it was a, yeah it was a really difficult one mm. and how have you felt about the response to it? And I mean, I guess even right in the centre of it, Caleb's performance. I mean, not easy for an American Texan to take on, yeah. even thinking of the accent. But you know, beyond that, also you know, this very sort of authentic, truthful performance. And, and he, you know, he has been um, you know awarded on the basis of that. So, how did you feel to see all that happen in the aftermath? Uh, I was I was I was deeply moved by Caleb, um, I, but I could feel it on set. This. Um, incredible kind of commitment to the role and you know and he was it was an American coming over to play a very particular character in Australia um, it, it was a huge uh, risk for him and and he was just so um, dedicated to it and um, you know and, and so were the other I mean you know I got the chance to work with Judy Davis you know who I just absolutely adore and um, was um, you know uh, quite overwhelmed actually in uh in in regards to kind of you know working with her but she was just incredible and and I, and I actually learned a lot about, about about directing and working with actors kind of through her um and then I worked with my wife Essie Davis who was who was also in it Natalie the Palio so that that kind of core ensemble was very giving and really kind of strong but yeah I, I couldn't be happier to see sort of Caleb get rewarded you know, and, and for a performance that I think is um, in, incredibly uh, nuanced and um, very um, dedicated, you know, it's it's a very tricky role to navigate, and 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 I think he, you know, did it with such kind of heart. Yeah. And it does seem like um, throughout your films, in very different ways, but you're often coming back to um, the issue of violence. Um, I guess in a sort of more general way, but quite specifically perhaps within Australia, um, you know, and how that's related to toxic masculinity. Yeah. Um, and having to kind of, I guess, perform a kind of masculinity in order to be included and, and what the impact of that is. Um, so, so why do you think that that is a theme that kind of comes to the surface many times? Uh, Australia's a very, especially for, for young men, it's a very tribal place. So I think if you're not part of the football team or if you're not part of the... The, the surf gang or the skate gang or whatever you 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 find yourself very very quickly being uh, being a, an outlier. So there was something about um, there's something there's something about our culture that um, uh, does have a violent history, especially with young men. That um, I, I guess Sean and I are very interested in sort of understanding more why and. Um, getting under the skin of some of those kind of characters um, yeah and 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 Nitram was you know definitely um, a look at a look at how how, how those kind of young men um, do become dangerous you know and 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 do um, sort of end up on the fringes uh, in a very particular way which is hard to sort of come back from um, so I, look when I when I started making films I, I wasn't I don't think I was consciously aware that that's what I was doing but I, I, I do think that there is a pattern and I am subconsciously kind of interested in that sort of world and 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 it's definitely something that Sean is writing about a lot so he's the one that I sort of collaborate a lot with so yeah and um, sorry I just forgot what I was gonna say that's all right <laughs> um, uh... Yeah, maybe perhaps thinking about genre though, um, and the fact that you kind of made a return to something kind of more um, social realist. Um, but what you're going to be working on next, I believe, it is a, a sci-fi. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's a. I'm doing a TV series in Australia, and the, and, the, and there's a couple of films that are um, that I'm um, been developing and working on at the moment. There's you know, one in America, and also uh, also um, uh, this one in in Europe that we're shooting as well. So. Um, and all really, really different. It's quite a quite a mixed bag of different um, different styles and genres. But I, I I quite like that. I quite like um, changing things up and mm -hmm. trying not to do the same thing again. And what do you think that kind of the power or the purpose of cinema, in a way, 
is to kind of, whether that's through a kind of stylized genre film or something that's very true to life, to help us work out through art some of these issues in society, how it can be a medium, whether it's catharsis or whether it's, you know, um, trying to unpick why things may be the way they are. Why do you think that's an important role for cinema? Um, I just think it allows us a place to meditate on, on, on life, you know, and it's, it should be a safe place. We should be able to go into a cinema and, and, and really explore, you know, challenging or uh, highly emotional or, um, you know, uh, ideas that perhaps we had certain judgments about that we now sort of come out of a, out of a, out of a film and, you know, it starts to challenge, us, challenge the way we may have thought about something. So... I don't know, it, 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 to me it's always been a forum of, or an interaction with, you know, um, with who we are and, you know, what, what, what we think about ourselves and what we think about the world. You know, cinema should be that place that allows you to um, think differently, you know. And also wanted to ask about the role of music in your film, because I know you work with your brother a lot. Yeah. On, and how um, you think that's, you know, like another exciting tool within um, those that you have at your disposal as a filmmaker and how you collaborate together on, on your films. Uh, it's really organic. He, I, I just give him the film to look at and he comes back with a whole lot of ideas and sketches and usually those kind of initial responses are, 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 are the ones that sort of stay in the film you know it's it's um it's it's quite uncomplicated working with him he, he's we, we have very similar tastes and and he has um he 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 becomes very inspired by by image and um is you know able to very quickly kind of tap into a I don't know a kind of sonic world there that that the the film wants to sort of speak to, and and we know pretty quickly if something is not right. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I know he's my brother, and there's there's something that's sort of unspoken about you know when we think something works and when it doesn't. And how do you see the broader cinema landscape now? And I guess the fact that it is expanding in and TV is kind of keeping up now with cinema, we've got all the streaming platforms, so on the one hand you could say it's maybe becoming oversaturated, but there's also this kind of wealth of opportunity and, and funding going in different places that it wasn't there yeah. before. It's, it's interesting, you know, even being here at the festival and watching the sort of films, there's a precision about feature films that is different from TV, you know, and, and I think that that's... I, I can just feel people getting interested in wanting to watch a film again and wanting to sort of be part of that very particular, you know, um, structure of what, what a film is as opposed to this sort of open-endedness of, you know, a, a, a TV series. So um, I, I'm, I can feel um, amongst my, you know, amongst my peers, but also, you know, even my daughters, 16-year-old daughters, are, are really gravitating sort of back to film and, and, and wanting to sort of be part of that, that sort of bullet which is a film, you know, of, of feeling as though something's leading to a, you know, to a, to a climax and a resolution as, a, as, a, as opposed to a kind of, you know, um, yeah, something that goes for eight hours. Um, but there's something very particular about that, that, that craft and that art form of a, of a film and, 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 and also a film that is being made for the cinema, you know, for the big screen. Um, and I can, I, I can just feel people sort of leaning back to it now more. I think they're sick of being in their lounge rooms and they're sick of watching things on laptops or phones and they actually want to be part of a live and even though cinema's not live, you are there with a live audience watching something and um, I, I think that, you know, the magic of the black box is sort of uh, I don't know, it's, it's starting to pull people back in again, I hope um, because there's, there's, there's just something naturally so engaging about sort of watching something with a large group of people and watching it on a big screen that you you just don't get in you know you, do, you don't get in your living room and particularly the talent that comes out of Australia it always kind of there's even a lot of actors you think are American you work out they're actually Australian there's definitely something you know in, in the water there there's like so many yeah. amazing cinematic talents both filmmakers and, and actors yeah I think I think it's because we we we're not scared to travel I think we're kind of we're always kind of going. Oh well, I'm, I'm going to go on a trip and I'm going to do this. And especially young Australian actors, they sort of they they don't wait around. They suddenly get up and you know you'll you'll find them everywhere. We we are, are a little bit like that. We 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 seem to sort of land everywhere. And 
all parts of the globe and I think it's because we're so far away from everyone and we have this desperate need to sort of um, yeah to, to, to travel and to you know get amongst it. Thank you so much for sharing all that with me. I yeah, really pleasure. enjoy the rest of the time here in Marrakesh. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.